Hello everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to the Book Refuge. Okay, that's a side note. You're here for some naughty little wrecks. I saw you, maybe you were curious what the peach emoji stands for. Maybe you're one of my older fans or maybe you just, you know, you know, because I have to name this one a little bit cheekily, right? Uh, <laughs> funny pun. And this video was put into my recommendation form actually a couple times and I have actually done this video before. I did it only about a year ago. Usually uh, some of these taboo ones I don't make another one so soon but it is something that I keep track of this taboo which again I as I said the first time I made this video I consider this one of the like very uh lesser taboos that's out there <laughs> i honestly uh i don't even blink an eye at it anymore but i know that for some people this is just some of their first taboo into some kinkier things maybe they would absolutely not even think of doing this in their real life or maybe they're an old pro at it and they just love it you know um but if you don't know we're talking about butt stuff today that's what the little peach emoji is that is uh what we're talking about we're talking about anal Mm -hmm. That is what this video is going to be about today. And again, I have to name it carefully because uh, I can't just put that in the title of my video, nor will it be in the description of my video. So, yeah. In fact, that is another mention I want to say. There's a lot of my taboo recommendations that I have to name them something clever or use an innuendo or whatever. So if there's ever a taboo of uh, out there that you would like my recommendations for, I do have a taboo recommendations playlist. So definitely check it out and make sure you, you know, read the titles of everything and see what the, uh, you know, what it might be alluding to. Because again, this video, I'm not going to be putting anal in the title and therefore when people are searching for it, that that's not what's going to come up. When I'm searching my own videos, this wouldn't come up. I had to look on a list I keep of the title of every video that I do and find the one that said stuff in the title because I didn't even put butt in the title. Anyway, I'm going on a rant about this actually <laughs> and I need to get to the point because I'm filming this a little bit later in the evening than I would normally but I'm going to be gone for a few days and I wanted to make sure I had a cheeky little bit. I keep wanting to say cheeky. Look at me just being so funny. But again, I consider this within the lower taboos, but for some people, this is a really spicy thing to be reading about, okay? Also, with this list, I only have one of these books that has a, uh, that has any MM in it. That isn't, I have lots of MM recommendation videos, you can check those out. I... I don't want to say this is only between hetero couples because it's not. I have some bisexual couples that are in this list. But in general, where I think it might be considered the taboo is more in uh, MF couples who, I don't know. Again, this one's tough for me to be like, oh, this was naughty because it just so isn't. But we're putting it on the taboo list just because for some people it might be. But for me, it's just... It's just fun. And I haven't done a taboo rack video in a hot little minute. So we're just going to do this. This is butt stuff part two. And uh, yeah, that's really the only thing that I was going to say is, yeah, I kept this one mostly to uh, MF couples just because it's not always the norm in an MF couple to read that. Whereas in an MMF or anything with the M's touching, like you're already going to have butt stuff going on. <laughs> That's just how it is. So I wanted to include somewhere you might not be expecting it, if that makes sense. Um, and within my spreadsheet of all the books that I read, which I feel pretty good about, I now have spreadsheets going back three years worth of videos or of books that I've read, which is great. Um, I track the different kinks that are in them and stuff like that. And so it's really easy to control F my documents and see. So anyway, that's enough rambling. <laughs> Let us get into these and go through some of them. So uh, the first one up here, we have The Brazen One by Daisy Jane. Now, as with a few of these authors that are going to get mentioned, if an author is comfortable putting butt stuff in one book, they tend to make a pattern of it and you'll find it in many of their books. And that is the case with Daisy Jane for sure. I think pretty much every book I've read from her thus far had some butt stuff in it because she writes everyday kinky romances and what's a good way to throw that in. So 
you know, you can feel good kind of jumping in wherever. But this one's a bit infamous in here because our hero uh, uses a cucumber uh, on her uh, behind and then he eats it. So for a lot of people, this book is wild, but this one, it's a grumpy sunshine. It's an age gap. It's, I mean, he's extremely grumpy. Atticus is very grumpy and they are actually friends. They're friends of this couple that gets together in the first book. And so they're forced to spend a lot of time around each other. Atticus is a real, real grump and just doesn't know what to think of this girl. But as they're forced to spend more time around each other because their friends are getting married, they, uh, have to be around each other and there happens to be one weekend where all four of them again like their friends and each of them are going to be staying at a cabin and Atticus gets there first and then our heroine ends up there just as the roads close because of snow so they end up kind of stuck in this cabin it becomes a little you know forced proximity for the weekend and that really kicks things off so this one ended up being really great the way that Atticus just stands up for the heroine and really comes in clutch for her and helps her to have a new appreciation for herself helps her stand up for herself in her relationship with her mother it was really powerful and his dirty talk y'all is the next level it's next level okay he's the dirty dirty man and not just for his use of the cuke okay he is mm, naughty boy now this one does have some trigger warnings for uh self-harm and an ed so read her more detailed descriptions of the trigger warnings on her website if you need it but uh do be prepared for that when you go into it for sure Okay, now we have a fun little one here that is actually a monster romance. And I could have included actually quite a few monster romances in this, but I just stuck with one that I think not a lot of people have like heard about as much. Um, and that's going to be Guarded by the Snake by Layla Faye. So, <laughs> I mean, I'll just tell you, there are three books I've read in the last like six months or so I guess it'd be a little longer because the one I read last year that all have um double dicked aliens or monster heroes involved and guarded by the snake is one snakes have two bloop bloop uh peens there and so uh usually you can have dp and dvp that happen with that as well as tail play when it's a snake so we have a lot of that going on um I'll get into this one in a second the other two that I just want to throw out there is hoarded by the dragon the dragon has double double peas in there fantastic and then there's also uh uh jumping the shark which i talk about a lot so i didn't do a full write-up in this one but those are three that i'll have like alien or monsters that have double p and there is some uh butt play that happens with that okay so with guarded by the snake we have our heroine who is being guarded by a snake this is a series that layla Fay has done with two other authors as well they alternate which books that they're writing and this one we have our heroine needs to be protected until I will say I can't fully remember when and why she needs to protect it. It's been a hot minute, but while he's protecting her, there's forced proximity, there's only one bed, and there's also their extreme attraction to each other. And he has a nice little, like, we call it like the penis pocket. And when he gets turned on, his like dingling starts to like whoop peekaboo out of there. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a two pronged attack from him. Wow, I'm just really going with the puns today. I apologize. <laughs> Even though I love talking about taboo and kinky things, you guys know, it still gets me heated up a little bit, right? Because it's weird to be talking about these out loud, even though I don't want anyone to have shame. That's what I'm here for, is to remove the shame for the things that you like. But that doesn't mean I still don't turn into a teenage girl who's like, hoo hoo, I'm talking about two dicks. You know, it's just, I'm 31 years old and that's just never going to go away, okay? All right. So yeah, that's a fun little tickle of a time. So check that out. All right. Now we have an author who, as I said, this author often puts anal in her books, um, in a lot of the ones I've read, but here we have Don't Forget Me Tomorrow by A.L. Jackson. And what do you know? We got to show you the little peekaboo of what's under that there. Ooh, snap. I'm actually reading the most recent book in this series, uh, that comes out on July 1st, I think it does. And uh, I'm just waiting to see whether uh, the anal, the anal is going to happen in that one or not. But this one is a single mother, also A.L. Jackson. Every single book I've read by her is a single parent. I have not read a single one that there isn't one. But anyway, this is a single parent. Um, it's also best friends 
or brother's best friend or best friend's sister, whichever way you want to say that. She has a little boy. She also runs a coffee shop and uh, our hero actually brings some danger to her door because he, when he was younger, was involved with some bad people and they want some revenge against him. And uh, also those people, um, they have targeted uh, Dakota to get back at him. Dakota and Ryder, I think are their names. I think that's who this one is. But I mean, A.L. Jackson writes sweepingly romantic and very lyrical writing to her stories. One of the things like, if you are a bit more like me these days where I don't always love the heroes to be noticing the body parts of the heroine so much, I just got to tell you, she does tend to fall into that. Now, her writing is very, as I said, very lyrical, very beautiful and the sweeping love that she writes, it wins out, but I feel like I wouldn't be being true to what I've been saying on this channel recently if I don't put that out there. Like, again, I'm reading the newest book and like Cody, the character in there, he notices her tits in every scene. And I'm like, sir, I know you're horny for this woman. Can we not? But anyway, she still puts anal in most of her books. So if that's something you're looking for, check, the, check, check her out for sure. All right, then we had Savage King by Deborah Garland. This was a new to me author in May. And this one is, well, it's technically listed as book two in the Astor Astoria Royals now because the author revamped the prequel and made the prequel just say book one. And then this one is technically book two. But it's the first book that I read. And this one has a forced marriage. It has like an alliance between two mafia families. And our heroine is hoping to like start a life. And she had someone that she was planning to marry who she thought she would be kind of able to control a little bit and be able to have a little bit of freedom with that. But no, instead, uh, she gets paired up to our hero in this one as like her father kind of owes this guy and he needs a wife and he needs an heir and so she's the one who's got to do it and she doesn't put up too much of a fuss to start because her plan is you know lull him into a false sense of security and then get out of there but uh then things slowly turn towards the sexual for the two of them and they find that they are very drawn to each other and it's gonna be a bit harder for her to leave than she planned for it so this one was good it had some kinkiness without being like completely over the top and a little bit of that side kinkiness included some butt stuff so there we go all right, then we have The Wild Man by Alex Grayson. Now, some of the ones I've mentioned already have some darker aspects to them. This one, this one starts off very dark, okay, but I loved it. This is actually a Tarzan retelling, um, and I've only read a couple of those, but this is, mm, I love it, but this is a wild man. He's living in the woods and mountains, and our heroine is actually a photographer, and she's heard about this guy, and she wants to go get some photos of him. So she kind of tells a little fib to her dad and her brothers about where she's going because she knows they wouldn't let her go there on her own. And when she gets there, she does spy the wild man. And guess what though? He spies her too. And he decides that she's going to be his mate. He just done decides that's going to be. And so he takes her and he literally ties her to him physically, ties them together. And, uh, takes her as his mate. And by take, I do mean in all the holes and in all the forms. Okay. So again, this one starts off very rough. Like he is R wording her in the beginning of this. It, it, it's tough. There's a non-consensual stuff and she just wants to leave. She wants to get out of there. Um, but the more time she spends with him, he, this does start with a language barrier because it's been many, many years since he spoke any English. Um, but as he, you know, hears her speak it, you know, he picks it back up again and we're finally able to talk a bit about how he got here, why he's being like this. And, you know, we're able to reason with him a little bit more. So I just, I talk a little bit more about that than I normally would, because this does start very dark and I didn't know how I was going to feel about it for the first, like good bit of reading it, but I ended up finding this story to be very moving very powerful story and I believed that she would have forgiven him by the end of this you know and I feel that he really is her mate in a sense when we get there but again he uh, he takes all of the holes and uh, yeah that would be a very interesting situation to have that happen in the wilderness I don't I don't know how that was working but it did it, it did 
Okay, now we have one that is definitely kinky and you can expect all the naughty stuff to be happening. I've been talking about this book in so many videos. I don't even know if I need to give you a full blurb, but I will. This one is about a billionaire CEO named Nikolai and he doesn't want any, you know, long-term people tearing or hanging on him and so he hires escorts and when his regular escort it ran off and got married and uh, left him without a date for an event um, this escort is like hey why don't you take out Corinne she's one of my colleagues she's very beautiful she's into a lot of the things you're into I think it'd be a really good pairing and Nikolai is like okay well I need someone on short notice anyway let me go ahead and take her so they talk to each other and Corinne and Nikolai meet and that is like all it takes man they have a wonderful first date they realize they're into a lot of the same kinks kinks which does include some light pet play it there are is a collar there is even a leash at one point which I know will turn a lot of people off I mean but I have also said that if you aren't sure whether you would like to read pet play in a story this is one of the better ones to see it because it doesn't go to the more twisted aspects of that that do make myself uncomfortable. I don't enjoy reading certain aspects which made me a little bit nervous to this but I was sent this book by the authors and I gave it a go because I was like it's beautiful. They sent me a beautiful package. I was like I'll give it a try. I'm an open-minded gal and I loved it because I loved their communication. I loved how things escalated as the more as they trusted each other. There was also some interesting aspects because Corinne being an escort, this being her job, there are certain things that she's like not allowed to do and I don't mean like you know, because, how do I say this? But because she's a professional who works with more than one man, like they're, and also because this isn't a, at the start, a fully genuine connection, right? She's being paid to be there. She's being paid to, at some extent, hold back her own personal desires and do what the client wants. It just so happens that Nikolai has, again, a lot of the same kinks as her, so it's a match made in kinky heaven, right? But there are certain things you don't allow a client to do to you because it's not safe. Like certain impact plays that would leave marks behind because her thought is that other partners don't necessarily want to see proof that you've been with someone else and having, you know, Nikolai's big old spank marks on her ass, you know, might deter someone else. So I really enjoyed the discussion of that. It was very frank and it was very honest and it it made it so when they got to a place where we could bust through those barriers because we've reached a new level of trust, it makes them very satisfying. So wow, I talked about this book more than I meant to, but I just love it. I just love it. And I found a lot of places to put it in because it does have so many kinks in it. So I mean, anal's honestly the least of which is going to happen with, the, with them in here. And it was really hot and also very beautiful at the same time. Really good. All right, then we have one that this is a bit of a lighter one, and I really liked how anal was used, and I'll talk about it in a second, but there was Drunk on You by Nikki Ash. This was actually another one sent to me by the author. I signed up for this whole trilogy, and I'm really glad that I did. This one is a fake fiance scenario. Um, I won't go into the whole story of this one. I know I say that in everyone, but this one I really won't, because there's not as much complex things to talk about it, but they are fake fiancés to each other who are actually vying for the same position in her father's company and they honestly meet each other through a dating app where they're going to be fake fiancés without um, them even knowing who each other is and then when he shows up for the job and she shows up for the job she's like oh my god you're the man that I'm just fake fake engaged to. So it's a bit of a quinky dink how we find ourselves in there. Now they are staying together. It's really cool. There's some really great scenes with them. And when they finally kind of like boil over into sexy times, our heroine actually loves anal sex. It's one of her favorite types of sex to have. And I love when the women really like it. Um, I, you know, never would call this person out, but there's someone in my real life who her and her partner it's their favorite kind of sex to have too. Like they just love doing that. And they've shared, she shared a lot of the experience with me. I know this sounds weird, but we've talked about it a lot and more than maybe you, we should, but anyway. And so I liked seeing in a heroine that she really liked that too. And it didn't feel forced. It was, she's honestly like, I have really good orgasms when there's something on my butt 
and I would like you to do that to me. <laughs> and there's a really hot scene where like she's the one who asked for it. Because you know, in a lot of the books, it's the man being like, I want to own every hole and I'm going to take it up your ass, you know, all that. Which, again, <laughs> I'm not making fun of it. This is a book about uh, butt stuff, so I'm here for it. But to have the woman be like, I love it, please do that to me, I thought was really hot. So it was there for it. Okay, we then have Her Villain by S.M. LaViolette. Yes, uh, of authors that I read historical for, S.M. LaViolette is one of the few that even puts kinkier type of stuff in her uh, historical romance without making it have to be like a fully dark story. But Her Villain, this is another one I've been talking about nonstop. Uh, this one is a, also a sex worker story and our heroine becomes the mistress to this man who is an assassin for a uh, mysterious group. I won't say who it is. And she basically becomes his mistress and is living with him. And they will have these negotiations where he does have a bit of a kink for humiliation. And there are certain sex acts that she doesn't necessarily want to do, but he offers to pay her more than the going rate if she will subject herself to them, which at first feels very like uncomfortable that he's using her need for money against her. But also she is a sex worker and we know that's what she needs. So it's like, what things is she willing to trade for her? You know, what, how much is she willing to take for certain things to happen? So I always find that very fascinating and I loved this book. That's why I've talked about it so much. All right, then there's Silver Fox by Kayla Gross. This one is just a very sweet, naughty novella. It is a dad's business partner romance, and she goes to her family's, like, lake house or whatever for the weekend, and he was actually also told he could go to this house. So he was told by the dad, and she was told by her mom that the house was open for the weekend, and they both end up there. And she is like, no, 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 don't run away. It's fine. She's also immediately attracted to him. She's like, wow, he's hot. And because this is novella length, it doesn't take long before they decide to make the most of this weekend and just enjoy each other. And there is a very, very hot scene of anal sex down on the beach, which don't ask me how that went well, but it was hot. It, like, it was pretty hot. This also has a plus-size heroine, Silver Fox heroine. It was sexy. So I definitely recommend if you need something quick and dirty for you, that one will work. Okay, also, as I said, I do have uh, one on here that is a MMF couple, and I just, I really enjoyed this book, and it was called Unstitch by Elodie Hart, and this one is a, like, by awakening one. It also has like an age gap. It has a sex worker and it also has this man who he's grown up in a very like a uh, religious household. And when in the beginning of this, he's actually having sex with his girlfriend before he's about to move and they're going to be kind of like breaking up and they have sex one more time. And he gets super hot when she will uh, play with his butt. And he's like, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything because he, you know, in the home that he grew up in, he can't have those type of desires for a man like that would just be wrong. So he's never even let it happen. So he moves to the new city, he starts working the job, and he ends up going to the club that his sister and her partner run together, and that is the, uh, I forgot the name of the club. Uh, it's the name of the series, Alchemy, Alchemy Club, I think it is. And at this club, there is our heroine who is a dancer in kind of the like warm up room. So she does a stripping routine basically to get everybody horny to go into the back rooms and do it. And then we have our other hero in this scenario who he is an older gentleman who frequents the club and he's super turned on by the woman and he really just goes for it about like trying to win her over and she's not, but her sister has asked her to not uh, sleep with anyone at the club to remain kind of like mysterious and unattainable by being the dancer in the beginning and she just can't help it. Uh, eventually she's won over by this guy. And then not long after is when she meets the other hero who, like I said, very buttoned up, very, has hidden a lot of his feelings. He hasn't even examined them. Like, isn't it, it isn't even a fact of him being, like, closeted or anything. He hasn't even explored those feelings beyond, again, liking a little bit of a finger up the butt. And when <coughs> our heroine decides that she wants him, she actually tells her other partner, I'm sorry, I'm just, like, pointing, just saying partner in person. I forgot what their names are. It's too many names in my head. 
Um, she tells him that she's very attracted to that man and she would like to sleep with him. And, uh, our older hero, he is bisexual and he also thinks that man is very beautiful and he's like, I'll make it happen, sweetheart. And so he sweet talks this man into coming back to one of the rooms with them to have a threesome with them. And during this threesome, he definitely is pushing. Like, this is one where, like, he knows what he's doing. He's seeing how much it's going to freak him out. And they have this really hot experience together. And it sends this other hero kind of really reeling. And he's really questioning everything. But he doesn't want to stay away from these two. And it leads him to kind of re-examine his sexuality. And oh, I just loved where this one went. I cried a lot in this one. Um, and there was also plenty of butt stuff happening in here. <laughs> it was great. So like I said, that's the only one I put in here that has like MM as some of the butt stuff in here. But I just, I really liked that one and I, I want more people to read that one. Then the last one here I have, this is me mentioning an author again, like I said. Almost every book I've read by this author, at least in this series, I think, has some type of like anal play but I just grabbed the first two to show of course it is Legacy of the Gods which is now complete the story is now complete everybody make sure you give it a go right so God of Malice God of Pain um and again like most of the books in this series have a lot of different types of sex happening but usually there's some anal or butt play or toys or something going on in these ones she writes a pretty kinky story that's for sure oh, these are so beautiful But yeah. Okay. Anyway, that is our little taboo video here. Oh, I hope this stays monetized. We'll see. We'll see. Um, to make sure that this gets seen by people, make sure you give this a thumbs up. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel. Check out those playlists that I mentioned. I have lots of taboo and kinky recommendations for you, so give those a go. Thanks so much for watching, friends, and I'll see you next time.